friends, welcome back to another Clean With Me video to give you some cleaning motivation. If you're new here, my name is Lenny and I'm a Dutch mom and I make cleaning videos, get it all done videos, cooking, homemaking, day in the life, vlogs and all that. So if you like what you see, please feel free to hit the free subscribe button down below to follow me for more. And today there is also a little cook with me part at the end of the video. I'm cooking a traditional Dutch stew called hache and I also make it in the slow cooker so if you're interested definitely stay tuned till the end of the video and then for now without further ado let's get some cleaning done always I start in the laundry room with three kids there is always a lot of laundry uh, I think I have at least two cycles every day um, I don't put everything in the tumble dryer because it can cause significant damage to clothing and it is also a little bit bad for the environment uh, so in summer I try not to use the dryer as much um, sometimes not even at all but now in fall the weather conditions are not great for drying clothes outside here in the Netherlands it's too humid um, even on the drying rack inside it takes more than a day to dry so I use the dryer for towels and sheets and um, kids underwear socks simple white t-shirts stuff like that but for normal clothes I prefer to air dry them on a rack over to the master bedroom. I think this is my last fall cleaning video of this year and it's also the last video um, where you see the white stairs in our entry hall. You will see it later in the video uh, because last night we started cleaning and sanding it and today we will start painting the first part. So if you're new here you probably don't know but about three years ago we moved to this house and after a giant renovation we're still working on some of the projects. Um, for example the entry hall is a space in our house that we never really finished but I think now after three years it's about time and I think winter is always a great moment to do things indoors in spring and summer there is so much work outside in the garden that we don't really have time for things inside um, we don't have time for anything really I have a vegetable garden and that on itself is very time consuming um, don't get me wrong I love it but like the house gets a little bit neglected in summer uh, so now we have some time in the evenings and sometimes before work and I wanted to have the stairs done before I start decorating for Christmas, which is something I really look forward to. 
Uh, I love December and I, I, yeah, I love to make the house super inviting and welcoming and cozy. It is such a special time of year. And I, to be honest, I hate the unwritten Dutch rule that you can't decorate for Christmas till after St. Nicholas on the 5th of December. Uh, I spend a lot of time and energy on the holiday decor. So I really want to enjoy it for a while. Um, so about 10 years ago, I switched to the Advent tradition. So I have the house ready before the first uh, Sunday of the Advent. And to me, St. Nicholas is part of the Advent time. So why does he not deserve to see nice a nice decorated home? Um, I think the tree is also for him. You know, it's just decoration. And um, yeah, I think that is how I sell the idea to myself and to my family and to my friends, because pretty much everyone says I decorate way too early. But yeah, I decorate before St. Nicholas and for St. Nicholas. So if you're Dutch, let me know your opinion in the comments down below. And if you're not Dutch, please let me know when you're, where you're from and when you start decorating for Christmas. I'm really curious to know. Polaroids all scattered across the dusty floor In the backseat of my Chevy 58 Along with bits of candy wrappers Looking back to when our castle was a shack Vacation was making figure eights in the parking lot Remember when we used to forget when we forgot It wasn't like we didn't work hard enough I'm trying to hold on to all the things that we did right so all the surfaces I cleaned with a little bit of all-purpose cleaner diluted in water. And for the floor, I use exactly the same mixture in my spray mop. Uh, the spray mop I have is unfortunately not available anymore in the Netherlands, but I found a really good one um, that is very similar to this one. It's very good quality. So I will link it down below in the description box. Um, I do get questions from viewers and I try to reply to all of you. So if you want to have more information about things or products that I use, please feel free to leave me a message or contact me on Facebook or Instagram. Uh, my details are all down below and I really love to connect with you. Years go by and gradually the tears run dry But I'm still here looking for your face in the faceless crowd Long after her our final ship had drowned wasn't like we didn't work hard enough I'm trying to hold on to all the things that we did right But how could I forget about you leaving Since my heart has never stopped believing All that I can see is that I lost you Lost you to them I'm looking for a reason to forgive you Sometimes I ain't gonna be with you Just the way you say that it's alright, alright now I am tearing down this wall How could I forget about you leaving Since my heart has never stopped believing all that I can see is that I lost you, lost you then I'm looking for a reason to forgive you Sometimes I ain't gonna be with you Just the way you say that it's alright, alright now I'm tearing down this wall
in the bathroom, I do a bit of a speed clean today, uh, basically on all the rooms because I wanted to use my limited time wisely. Um, when I don't have a lot of time, I there is a trick that I use that I learned from the master, Jordan Page. I talk about her a lot. She is one of my favorite YouTubers and uh, she's a mom of eight. And yeah, to me, she's very motivating. And from her, I learned the 80-20 rule. So when you don't have a lot of time for a deep clean, this is a genius trick. And the principle means that 20% 20, 20 of what you do uh, makes 80% um, of the impact. So I probably had more than 10 things to do in the master bedroom, but the biggest difference visually uh, is an empty floor and a bed that is made. So my focus today was on tidying and cleaning the surfaces and floors because, you know, that makes the biggest impact and it will make the room feel nice and, and clean. Um, now in the bathroom, uh, I did the sink because it got really filthy. Uh, with kids, the toothpaste is always all over the place. I'm not sure if you guys can relate because I think my kids are very messy teeth brushers. Uh, the bath just needs a rinse to get off some dust and then the toilet. Well, you can never clean a toilet too often, I think. And then I'll do the floor. And after that, I move downstairs to clean my white stairs for the last time. You're already on my mind when it gets late. I always realize that I need you. Are you thinking about me too tonight? stairs white uh, once again um, so the plan is to paint the stairs um, all the doors are already black uh, we chose an old vintage kind of black and I love how the doors turned out uh, this space this entry hall is one of the spaces in our house that we never really finished and it feels really cold and empty so yeah I am not the kind of person who does an interior in one day um, you know, when you make a mood board and you work from there, I, I, I find it very, very difficult to visualize. So I like to work step by step. And um, I just love so many different styles that usually I just can't make a decision. Um, painting the doors black took months of doubting. But I, right now I'm really happy we did it. Um, yeah, so the walls are very difficult to paint. We painted everything white and I thought, you know what, I will do the walls after. I will see how it turns out, you know, work from a white canvas and see what colors I want on the walls later on. But now that the painter is gone, it's really difficult to get a painter nowadays. And so I thought I wanted to do it myself, but the heights are so difficult to reach. So we decided to give the stairs some extra character uh, and see how that turns out. Um, I have no idea. I have I cannot really visualize, but I'm sh I'm sure it's a massive change. Uh, we planned about two weeks for the stairs. Every day we try to do a little bit of painting before work or after work, and then it has to be finished because I want to start getting the house ready for Christmas. So yeah, uh, if you want to follow the progress, definitely make sure you're subscribed to my channel because in one of my next videos you will see how the stairs looks like in black.
cooking time, I show you how to make this typical Dutch beef and onion stew called haché. What you need is meat, um, one kilo and a half of chuck roast. That's what I used. And for the original recipe, you use the same amount of onions. Uh, that's a kilo and a half of onions. A sweet dark beer. I had the bottle lying around that I just showed you, but it wasn't sweet enough. Next time I would use a, sw um, a more sweeter beer. Um, three tablespoons of flour, two tablespoons of paprika powder, two bay leaves, four cloves, uh, a beef stock cube and a slice of gingerbread. And later on, I used an extra stock cube and another slice of gingerbread to make the sauce just how I like it. Uh, I will put all the ingredients down below in the description box. So don't worry if that went too fast. Then I start with cutting the meat. Um, doesn't have to be expensive meat, just the quality you can afford. It needs a lot of stewing time and I always double the portion to put one in the freezer. Uh, you will find um, the taste even better when it comes out of the freezer or when you eat the haché the next day. All the flavors are even more intense. So then I cut all the onion in slices. Uh, if you find the cutting a bit time consuming in the morning, you can of course meal prep this. Um, and then I mix the flour and the paprika powder with the beef. Um, you can use salt and pepper to taste, um, but I like to season afterwards. Then I melt some butter in the pan and fry the meat in small portions for about five minutes until a bit brown and then transfer it to the slow cooker. Uh, the flour will help thicken the sauce and so does the gingerbread. Then I fry all the onions uh, for a couple of minutes before also adding it to the slow cooker. Uh, if you want, you can caramelize the onions with a bit of sugar. Um, yeah, you can just vary a bit and try what you like. I also added the beer into the pan for a second because it came out of the fridge. And, you know, to put a cold liquid um, on the meat, I always think it shocks the meat and makes it chewy. So, yeah, uh, I put the beer in the pan so it becomes a little bit tepid and then I pour everything in the slow cooker or crock pot. Um, then I add one stock cube. Um, you can add a second one later, like I said before, uh, if, the, if the sauce needs it. Um, I also add the bay leaves, the cloves and the Dutch gingerbread. I used one slice to start with, uh, but yeah, added another later on. Then I add 200 or 300 milliliters of water. Just make sure there is enough liquid um, for the stew. I like to start with 200 and then I can always add more later. Set the slow cooker on a low setting for about eight hours or a high setting for five hours. Uh, this really depends on the slow cooker you use, but uh, by trying and using yours, you will get to know your machine. Um, I used the low setting to start with and later on that day I checked uh, the sauce was a bit too thin and not sweet enough. So that's where I added the extra uh, stock cube and an extra slice of gingerbread. And then I put the slow cooker on high to thicken the sauce. So I served this dish the traditional way with boiled potatoes and red cabbage. Uh, the red cabbage comes from a jar this time on a weekday. You just can't do it all. And I really like this, this um, brand of red cabbage. It has these little pieces of apple in it and I love it. It's really sweet. Um, you can also serve it with mashed potatoes and a salad if you like. Um, yeah, so here it is. It's super delicious. The meat is so tender. Uh, I would really be happy if you guys give this a try. Vary a bit, um, you know, adjust it just the way you like it. Give it a twist of your own. Stews are the best in fall and winter. So I hope you enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe. And then I want to thank you guys for watching. Bye.